seed of where she might be nurtured for a short time. A brother. Oh, we all have chances. Hello again. Welcome to this last session on the Gospel of Luke. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it very much. Jesus is here with us in this studio and we, he is with you and we are with you. Our hearts go out to you that as you study this and as I preach it that his spirit will be so evident in your room wherever you are, wherever you're listening to it because it's all about him, it's not about me, it's about him, what he did and what he prepared for us in the future. It's gonna be glorious, it is glorious because he's a good God, he is a lover, he loves to give. So I thank you for tuning in, listening to us on Roku, Satellite uh, 19, wherever. Um, you can pick us up on YouTube. We are thrilled to be able to do this with um, Bishop, Bishop Nikki Ogamba has prepared this way. And we're going to um, go back to Luke again. I didn't finish in chapter 19. There's some really good things in here. Uh, it's a parable. This is a strange one, only in Luke. It's a parable about a, a, a steward who gave out, uh, he called 10 of his servants, 10 of his people with him, and he gave them each one mina. That's on uh, slide number 18. Ten minas, um, that was actually um, a coin or whatever, some, something of money because he wanted them to do business with it. And so he gave them instructions um, because he was leaving. And before he left, he gave one mina to each of ten servants, which was to be used for business purposes. All you business people out there, um, what the God has given to you, uh, use it for his glory with integrity, with uh, faithfulness, with humility and excellence. And God is going to see what he's going to do here. Okay, so when the noble, noble man returned, he inquired of each servant what happened to the mina. Mina? Oh, I don't know. The first man invested the mina and gained ten more. Ten more. His reward was 10 cities. The second man invested his mina and gained five more and was given five cities. Another man buried his and was rebuked. His mina was given to the first man. Now, wasn't you'd think, oh, well, that's not very, uh, that's not very fair. Aw, aw. <laughs> but God is the judge, isn't he? And he was giving a principle here. In verse 26, Jesus says, I tell you that to everyone who has shall more be given. Yes. Have, you have something. Each of us has been given something in the new birth. We've been given something. It's not of our own, but it's something he's given to us. And as I use it for God's honor and glory, he's going to give me more. He's going, to get, he's going to give me more anointing. He's going to give me more. It's not that, yeah, money too, for the kingdom. If I'm responsible for what he's given me, he's going to give me more. And the same thing, that principle for you is going to give you more. But don't bury it. Say it's a gift. Yes, he's given it to you. But let us be responsible with a little thing. And let us know that he's a good father. He's going to reward. Are we doing it for a reward? No, we're doing it for his glory. Oh, that he can prune us, that there'll be more fruit for his glory. So whatever gift he's given you, it's not about you. It's totally about him. What do we have to brag about? It's all him. And he wants to get the glory. Oh, is he selfish? No, he's God. <laughs> he's got good plans for you, dear ones. He's a good God. He wants us to be responsible with whatever he has given us, little or small. Don't look at somebody else and say, oh, uh, they got more than I got. No, let's keep our eyes on him. He's a good God. Just use what he's given for his honor and glory. Hallelujah. 
Okay, let's see. Then some other things happened there. We covered before that triumphal entry, how he goes, he get the, they get the donkey that he sits on, never been sat on before, and how they spread their garments on the road before him, and then the, um, the young people, or whatever, they all the people, multitude, began to praise God. Blessed is the king, this is 19, verse 38, who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But the fire Pharisees said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And what does he say? I tell you, if these keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Hallelujah, don't let those stones cry out instead of me. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, okay. then it says, verse 41, and when he approached, he saw the city and wept over it. There are other scriptures, I think it's in uh, 13 verse, uh, chapter 13, verse um, 34 and 35. He, he's, he compared it to a, a, a heather, a hen who wants to gather his chicks. He said, I would have done that, but you would not. He wept over that, said he loved those people. He loved them. He came for them and they rejected him. Oh, he says, when days shall come upon you, enemies will throw up a bank against you. He sees this is 70 AD. This is going to happen. You did not recognize, verse 44, you did not recognize the day of your, of your visitation. Okay, then he cleanses the temple. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Okay, then we are going into, um, let's see, chapter 20. Parable of the vineyard owner. Oh, God, let's see. Twenty-one last days. So, uh, let's see. Now, many of those things are repetitious in, in Luke 20. So I'm going to get 21, chapter 21. Actually, my husband has spoken about that last day's wisdom and the signs of the Christ coming. And let's say, start in verse 8. That's in slide number 19. Uh, wisdom and preservation of the saints. When you hear of wars and rumor and disturbances, do not be terrified. Nation will rise against nation. Great earthquakes, we hear of those, don't we? Plagues and famines, terrors and great signs from heaven. Before all of these things, they'll lay hands on you, persecute you. Oh, which verse is that before? Let's see. Uh, they will lay hands on you, persecute you, bring you before kings and governors for my name's sake. But he said, you'll have a, there'll be an opportunity for your testimony. That's verse 13. It's an opportunity. He said, don't prepare ahead of time. Oh, yes. Opportunity to talk. Um, so make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend for I'll give you utterance. And wisdom, uh, oh, and then look at this nice verse. And you'll be hated, but, verse 18, yet not a hair of your head shall perish. Can you believe that? Oh, he said it. He said he's, he's concerned about every sparrow that falls. Are you not more precious than sparrows? He said not a hair of your head will perish. Didn't Paul say that uh, before the shipwreck? He said, an angel appeared before me. God, maybe he's going to do that again. We're going to be persecuted along with the Jews and, and, and the Christians. We're going to be persecuted. But he said, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. Does that mean we, might, we won't be a martyr? No, I don't know. But we need to be willing to die for him. Oh, you say, well, that's easy for you to say. You live in the United States. I say, God is going to bring me through. God is going to bring me through. I don't know what's going to happen, but I will not deny him. Maybe you say that's easy for you to say. I say, God sees your heart. He's going to prepare you beforehand. Oh, that I may live for him, for his honor and glory. Whatever place I go, we do that when we go on an airplane. Oh, is this airplane going to go down or not? We don't know. We say we're listening to the Holy Spirit. Airplanes can go down. They can go down. You know, get in a car accident. All kinds of things can, bad things 
can happen and they do happen to Christians. I don't have all the answers, but I say, am I ready? I believe I'm ready. I believe it. But God will give me the grace. I want to keep my eyes on him. I can't do it by myself. But his spirit lives in me and he's going to help me through all of these times. Okay. Uh, chapter 1, verse 34. I want to continue there. He said, be on your guard that your hearts be not weighed down with dissipation. Now, I call that distractions. You know, we can get caught up in food and clothes and entertainment and sports and lots of things. He said, be on your guard. Don't be weighed down with that. We have to think, oh, Lord, is that, that important in your kingdom? Is that going to bring honor and glory to your name? Is that a waste of my time, your time, your money? He said, be on your guard. Be conscious of that. When you're in the car, oh, my husband and I put the angels before us. Psalm 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around about us to deliver us for those who fear him. For those who fear him, the angel of the Lord encamps around about him. We can easily get in a car accident. You can easily get in a plane crash. But I believe those angels are there. Um, I'm trusting him. I'm, but I want to fulfill what he's asked me to do before I go home. And I believe that's what you want to do. You want to fulfill what he's asked you to do. And you've surrendered unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. It abides by itself. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. I believe I will bring forth much fruit by his Amen. grace, his grace Amen. only. Amen. It's his grace only. Keep on the alert. Uh, praying in order that you may have strength to es escape all these things that are about to take place. Uh, is that verse 36? Yes. Keep on the alert at all times, praying in order that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place, to stand before the Son of Man. So his strength is available. Oh, I think of uh, Hebrews 4, I think it's verse 16. Uh, Come with confidence to the throne of grace. Amen. Come with, he's, he invites us. Come with confidence to the throne of grace. And there you will find mercy. And you'll find help uh, and grace to help you in time of need. And he said, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if I am spiritually up there, I don't feel like it. But anyway, he said, I can come with confidence to the throne of grace. I need help. I say, Lord, I need help. I can't do it by myself, but he's available to all of us. He's a good father, a good father, and he gave us that Holy Spirit to help us. Hallelujah. Okay, now we're going to the crucifixion, and we're going on here the last few chapters, 22. We are in there. Judas agrees to betray Jesus, Jesus, slide 21. <clears throat> he, he agrees with the chief priest to betray Jesus. Here he had seen all of these miracles. He had seen people healed and all of that stuff, but he still, oh, his heart was not for God. Let's not be that kind that see miracles and then our heart gets turned away. Oh, God, protect us from that. I believe your, that Holy Spirit is going to deal with us and going to help us, that that Holy Spirit, that we can, can repent immediately. Oh, but, but Judas did not. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. So they may go to the upper room, and they celebrate the Passover there. Jesus does the bread and the wine. He talks about a new covenant, a new covenant. Actually, you know, he was living in the old covenant. After he died and put his blood on the mercy seat, it was the new covenant with better promises, new power. And he told him to wait in Jerusalem. I'm getting ahead of my story. But anyway, the new covenant that is so wonderful, dear ones. He lives in us. We're not on our own. He lives in us. He made a new covenant. He even said that way back in the Old Testament. He put a new covenant with his people. He write on our hearts. Oh, so thank you, Jesus. He gave thanks, his supper. And then he predicts that uh, Judas is going to betray him. 
Oh, but first of all, let's see, the disciples, let's see. Uh, well, no, he predicts that, uh, that Judas is going to betray him. But now the disciples, here they are, they're arguing about who is the greatest. Here we see the flesh. Oh, God. They'd been with him for three years, and he had talked about that he's going to suffer and die, and yet he will rise again on the third day, and they're still thinking, kingdom. Uh, let's see, where am I going to be with him in his kingdom? Oh, and they said, the king said, uh, and Jesus says, oh, Kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, but not so with you. This is slide 21. But let him who is greatest among you become as the youngest and the leader as the servant. But I am among you as the one who serves. Are we serving? And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I grant you that you may eat and drink. Here he's doing something good for them. He says, look into the future. Look past what's coming up. But he said... You drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, this was encouraging. I wonder if they even thought about that or if that went over their heads, too. I don't know. But anyway, God has so, said things to me, and I think, oh, I forgot about that. I need to write it down, and I look back, and I think, yeah, he said that. Why didn't I obey? Why didn't I remember that? I have to write things down and uh, remind myself, read them again, write it down. What did he say? He said, don't worry, don't fear. You have nothing to fear for the future. I'm with you. Okay, let's see. Then he, yeah, he says, Simon, Simon, verse 31, 22, verse 31. Behold, Satan has demanded permi permission to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Uh, and you, when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Oh, he saw what was going to happen. Oh, because Peter had said, oh, that's slide 22. Uh, Peter said he's ready to go to prison and death. And then Jesus says, oh, but I say to you, Peter, the cock will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. Uh, and Peter, yeah, he said, oh, that'll never happen. But it does happen. You know the story, don't you? Jesus do goes to the Gethsemane and he prays. And Judas comes out and he gives Jesus the kiss. And they, the soldiers come. I think it is isn't it Peter that takes up his sword and, and cuts off the ear of the one man. And Jesus picks it up and heals it. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Peter was following at a distance. Okay, um, and then Jesus is tried by the Sanhedrin. He's beaten and tried. Uh, chapter 23, Pilate tries Jesus. Uh, and then slide 23, Pilate tries Jesus, followed by Herod, who mocked him greatly with many others in attendance. Jesus never answered Herod a word. Pilate again tries Jesus in front of the chief priests and rulers of the people. He says, he, Pilate says he finds no guilt in Jesus, nothing deserving of death. Remember, his wife had a dream. It doesn't say it in this. I don't know if it says it right here. But anyway, which gospel it says. But uh, his wife had a dream and said, uh, you know, that, that was a righteous man. And she warned her husband. Oh, um, so Pilate finds no guilt in Jesus, nothing deserving of death but proposes to punish Jesus and release him because he wanted to satisfy the, the Jews there. He said, oh, well, I'll just have him beaten, you know, what, 29 stripes or, or whatever, beaten, and then they'll be satisfied. And then, you know, it's our custom that we can release somebody on this festival. This is the Passover. It's our custom that we, we release one person. And I'll bring out this, uh, this man, Barabbas, and, and uh, he'll say, I will release him. And then the crowd yells, no, 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 we'll release Barabbas. But he was a murderer. But they chose Barabbas. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. They chose the wrong thing. And then Pilate washes his hands, doesn't he, and hands him over. Pilate proposes to release. I got that on here. Slide 23. Jesus carries his cross to Golgotha and is helped by Simon of Cyrene. Oh, Lord Jesus, help your people. 
And then so Jesus is carrying his cross, and what does he do? He's talking to the people along the road. Where are we now? We are in, um, this is Jesus, let's see. Oh, this is chapter 23. They're following him, 23, verse 27. There was a following him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting him. You know, Luke, really just think about the women and what the women are thinking about. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the womb that never bore and the breast that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the, uh, to the moms, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in the green tree, what will happen in the dry? He's looking forward to 70 A.D. When they, 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 he's telling them they must flee because Titus is coming in and he's going to destroy the city, going to destroy it. And the temple was, uh, was desecrated. Well, let's say it was the, uh, destroyed, except for that one wall, Solomon's wall there, which still stands. But um, Jesus is thinking about somebody else. He's thinking. Okay, uh, then... Back to slide 24, when hanging on the cross, he said to these, these uh, two thieves, no, he's saying, Father, forgive them. Uh, where are we, 24? Father, forgive them. Uh, uh, verse 34, 23, 34. Jesus, um, and there were two criminals laying there on the cross too. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He's thinking of those that have put him on the cross. And then, um, let's see, those two criminals that were hanging there with him uh, thought, oh, we are guilty. We are guilty. But the one says, oh, well, um, let's see. He was saying, Jesus, remember me. Let's see, back to 41. We indeed justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. What does Jesus say? Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He got his reward. Thank you, Jesus. All it takes is a simple sign of repentance. Oh, Jesus. I am guilty. I am guilty. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. You can say that on the last day. You can uh, say that to somebody who maybe you've prayed with them for a long time and talked about Jesus and they haven't done anything. But as they are dying, they can still call out Jesus. They can still call out his name because he loves people. He doesn't want them to go to hell. He has heard your prayers, dear one. He has heard your prayers as they are passing. Maybe Jesus is going to appear to them uh, before they go to their reward. And you're going to, as light or as an angel of light, so, and because your prayers are important. So that was the thief. He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And then verse 44, and it was about the sixth hour uh, in the darkness, verse uh, slide 25, and we are still in chapter 23. Darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. That's three hours from noon till three o'clock, which one is supposed to be the brightest. But uh, And the veil in the temple is torn in two. Jesus Christ, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He then breathed his last breath, and he died received up to heaven. It doesn't say here, but he said it is finished in other Gospels. Maybe we'll find that out in John because John also goes through the crucifixion. All four of the Gospels go through the crucifixion. There are many things that Jesus said. You know, they gave him the, the wine and uh, on the sponge when he was thirsty. Um, but Jesus uh, was there for us. It's like our sins were laid on him. Our sins. And that's why that was the darkness. Oh, because uh, 
there was actually God's mercy. So the people were standing there ridiculing Jesus. And some were spitting on him and calling him, oh, why don't you come down from the cross? You've saved other people. Why don't you do that? Oh, it was absolutely horrid, I'm sure. But it was our sins. From every generation, just, can you, I can barely think of a huge load that was on Jesus as he was there. Huge load of sin on him. He says, Father, why have you forsaken me? It's because he carried that sin element, all of our sins, in his body on the cross, paying the price. Remember when he prayed, oh, Father, if it be your will, do it some other way. Oh, but Jesus, Jesus, oh, he's buried in a new tomb then. Oh, and then there's something exciting. Uh, yes. Uh, still something really exciting. Uh, let's see, the resurrection. The resurrection, because I got a nice story here about the two men on the way to Emmaus. This is, uh, Luke is the only one that has this story, and I think this is so precious. But anyway, let's see. Uh, slide number 26. Uh, the women go to the tomb. Here's the women again. The women went to the tomb and found the stone because they were, they were going to um, anoint the body with the spices they had prepared because it was the day. Um, they thought, well, the body is going to uh, decompose and it's going to really stink. So we got to put these spices on them. And that's, well, oh, that was what they did in those days. Um, so they go to the tomb early in the morning on that Sunday, found the stone rolled away, and two angels who spoke to them. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you. They reported the great news to the rest of the disciples. Then they ran back and reported it to the other disciples. And then Peter leaves and goes to the tomb and finds the linen wrappings. Uh, but there is a little story here. It's not in the book of Luke. I, and maybe it's in John where uh, Mary Magdalene is crying out there in the garden and uh, Jesus appears to her. And she says, why are they taking my, the body of Jesus and where it is? And he, he says the word Mary. And do we recognize his voice? All he had to say, Mary. Do we recognize it? Do we have that quiet time with him that we will recognize when he calls our name? Or are we so busy, distracted? Oh, and he said, don't touch me, for I haven't gone to my father yet. Oh, what a compassionate Jesus, Jesus. Okay, then, oh, they, so Peter then goes through the tomb, finds the linen wrappings, and then John comes. It's in the other gospel. And then uh, Jesus appears to two men. This is very interesting story. It's chapter 24 on the man, the men on the way to Emmaus. They're walking to Emmaus and they're making a conversation. And they're saying, oh, that Jesus, uh, oh, have you heard about what's happening? And um, uh, Jesus pretends he doesn't know. So um, he tells them. He goes back from the old scriptures and he begins telling them how how the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He talked to them as uh, friends. And then he, uh, the, he pretended he was going to walk on, and he stayed with them. And he just revealed, or he, the, all of a sudden, the blinders came off their eyes, and they saw it was Jesus. Oh, and then Jesus appears to uh, the eleven and many others, along with the two men from Emmaus. He showed them his hands and his feet. And this is slide 27. They're all utterly amazed and filled with joy. Uh, and then uh, slide 28, he gives, in chapter 24, he gives the Great Commission. It's written that the Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day in repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. That's what we're doing with OCN here on your, on your device, Roku. We're de pretend, uh, proclaiming the name of Jesus on your satellite dishes and on the Internet, YouTube, and whatever. So this is good soil. We thank you. Jesus, proclaim. It's not only us. You can do it. 
He said, I'm sending forth a promise of my Father upon you, but to stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. So they stayed in Jerusalem, and then Jesus appeared to them. Here we go. Uh, Jesus appears to them, sending you forth a promise, verse 49. And then look how Luke does. And it comes about that after that, while he was blessing them, he parted from them, and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. This is how Luke, this is the man Luke. So I'm going to praise you, God. I praise you for this word as it has gone forth today that is changing lives, changing me. And it's going all over the world. I thank you. It's going to prosper. Oh, your word will not return void. So I thank you. These are new people uh, raised up for these last time in battle and then with a power from on high. I declare you have God's power and I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Eden Bush might be nurtured for a short time. Our brother. Oh, we all have chance.